We had to put Bowser to sleep. In the moment, I'm thinking, you know, I grew up with the movie Old Yeller. He's uh, seriously injured a couple different dogs, um, including Zoe, who's standing right here. I've had her stitched up a couple times. <laughs> oh my god. Bowser got Logan in the face, and it actually happened. Logan tried to take food from him. You know what I've always done with my dogs? Is I get really close to them and I get in their business while they eat because I don't want a mean dog. I don't want my little babies coming next to him while he eats and him bite their hands off. So I get them used to this. I don't know if it's the right thing to do, but I've always done it. So we don't need to call me an anti but at the same time, if you wanted to call me an anti you could go ahead and do that. I don't, I know a lot of people think that those people are crazy. But also, Thailand has a, its own law that's unique to it, that um, after you are, you pick up your child and they're your child, you are not allowed to talk about them or share any images, photos, videos, anything about them online for a year. We literally were like, yeah. What? Family vlogging content on YouTube really needs to stop. And today I'm sharing one of many reasons as to why. Dan and Nikki have a YouTube channel with over a million subscribers where they share family vlogs and lifestyle content. And they're most recently taking a lot of heat for putting their dog down over a very preventable situation that has a lot of people feeling disgusted. And trust me, that gets extraordinarily infuriating. And we're going to go over all of that in just a second. And if you didn't think it could get worse, <laughs> oh, it always gets worse. If you take a little dive into her YouTube content, she has everything from very interesting takes on not wanting to wear masks to uh, wanting to adopt a child from Thailand and then canceling the adoption process because she found out that she wouldn't be able to vlog its life. You know, like Mika Stouffer did. I have literally quit a job because of people like this. I'll get into that story at the end of this video. But Nikki and Dan Filippi, Google says that that's how you pronounce their name, uploaded a video and an Instagram post where they were talking about putting their dog down because it bit their child while their child was grabbing on its ears and taking food away from it. This story, it's upsetting, it's frustrating. So I'm gonna break it down for you really fast. They had this dog, they named it Bowser for nine years, nine years. And over the course of these nine years, they've realized that Bowser had an aggression problem that stemmed from an incident where as a puppy, this dog was attacked. You know, for many, many years, for most of his life, he was, an extremely dangerous animal outside the walls of my house. So he was definitely an outside animal that I had to keep inside. Well, Bowser so, was attacked when he was a puppy. And we never really talked about that very much, but right. that was like a, that was a big turning point in Bowser's personality. In my opinion, what it seems like is this dog had fear-based aggression, which is a very common form of aggression that happens in a lot of dogs. And this is one of the forms of aggression that causes bites. There's been multiple instances, um, you know, we could have, we could have put Bowser down a really, really long time ago, uh, several times, and I've uh, just been putting the day off. Yes, he's, he's uh, seriously injured a couple different dogs, um, including Zoe, who's standing right here. Up a couple times. Throughout this entire video, they have talked about how they have gotten advice from many counsel, yet in the video, they have only mentioned like two opinions from what I could remember. So the first opinion they had, they wanted to get rid of the dog when it had aggression problems. And the person they talked to on the Humane Society said, So we contacted the Humane Society and we had a long discussion with someone over there. And basically she made it clear to us that rehoming Bowser was not an option because he had been with us from birth, basically. I mean, Dan was his... He was Dan's spirit animal, Dan was his spirit human, you know, so they were bonded. I'm flabbergasted and dumbfounded by that because from my experience, any professional that notices a problem in the home and notices that this dog isn't being given the proper requirements it needs to have its aggression taken care of, uh, would probably say, you know what, it might be best if you rehomed your dog, especially if you're planning on having a child soon, it might not be the best idea for you to have this animal that could be a danger to your family or anybody else. 
that's red flag number one. Red flag number two is the fact that they then talk about multiple times throughout the nine years they've had this dog, they were constantly afraid of something happening and talked about how they were just waiting for something to happen. They were just waiting for something to happen. She, we kind of relayed to her all the instances where Bowser had shown aggression and we were scared. And by the end, she was like, it sounds like you're just waiting for Bowser's worst attack to happen. Like that lady said, you're always waiting for the worst, the worst thing, thing to happen. And eventually it's like, is it going to get to a point to where um, someone else has to put it down or I'm forced to do it because of something that horrible happened? In some ways, it's been anticipated for a really long time, and in others, it was completely shocking. Like, never crossed my mind. Oh, now we're going to have to put Bowser down. I just thought, oh, he's just got to be in the right home. Do you ever think that in the course of these nine years, maybe the idea should have been, hey, let's not wait for something to happen. Let's get this behavior corrected by professionals, by trainers, by the vet that might have some medication to provide for it if it has anxiety. But the training you see wasn't an option either because like Dan said in the video, the only person who knows how to handle Bowser is him. Getting counsel from multiple professionals who are with dogs all the time. All of them said that they all said the same thing. Um, well, nobody knows how to take care of Bowser except for me. Uh -huh. That's very interesting, by the way, because from my understanding, from the little I know about the situation, it doesn't seem like he's a dog training professional or a veterinarian or somebody who has years and years of study and skill and practice in dealing with aggressive dogs. He just had an aggressive dog and didn't know how to handle it. But by all means, you definitely seem like you're the only person who can handle him. That's why he bit your kid in the face. If you know that you have an aggressive dog, it had a traumatic experience, so it has a lot of triggers and stuff because dogs can have that too. Too, why would you think that it would be a great idea to have a child around this dog when dogs in general, it doesn't matter what breed, doesn't matter how great their temperament is, you could have the most well-behaved animal ever and it could still have a moment where something happens and they can do something unpredictable. So when you're having a baby with any type of dog, you want to consider this, but when you're having a baby with an aggressive dog who you know who has incidents in the past, why at that point did that not go off in your head as, huh, this might be a bad idea. Oh, right, right, because of the excuses they mentioned earlier, right? All the counsel they talked about and talked to. Oh, okay. So uh, then, after having a toddler, they realize that this toddler... You know, he's really grabby, too. He, uh, he, he grabbed onto Bowser's ear, and Bowser didn't do anything. You know, he's, he's that calm, gentle giant that lives in my house. But, you know, Logan got him so good that... Um, if you know what uh, an MMA fighter looks like or a wrestler, they have the cauliflower ear, just balloons up. That's what happened to Bowser's ear. Bowser would, you know, Bowser wasn't going to go out of his way to aggress on Logan, so everything was fine. Like, but once he got older and he could move and he got feistier, it was it was Logan in Bowser's space, and Logan yeah. couldn't help but grab at him and try to steal things from him and try to interrupt him when he was eating or scream at him. And so it was almost kind of unfair to Bowser because it was like he's a good dog ish, and when we told you we born him years ago, thinking he was going to have to go because of those things but he wasn't doing really anything to logan but the problem was once logan got older and once Bowser crossed that line they clearly didn't do enough to prevent their kid from grabbing on the dog the kid gave the dog cauliflower ear which if you don't know is when an ear can it's either from infection or injury an animal or person's ear can fold up sometimes it could be temporary sometimes it can be permanent and when a kid is putting enough force on an animal's ear to give it cauliflower ear you can imagine how painful that must be especially when dog's ears are extremely sensitive. So um, the fact that that kid put that much force on the animal and nothing was done at that point to either separate them or to correct the child, say, hey, listen, you don't grab him like that. Um, nothing was done, clearly, because then an incident occurred where the child was bit by the dog after interrogating it. There was one incident that happened. Bowser got Logan in the face and it actually happened 20 minutes before we were supposed to leave to the airport to go visit her parents. So um, obviously it, it wasn't bad, but Logan still is, um, has a little mark. he's still healing up from a little mark on his face from that was a little, we call them dolphins. Uh, so. Hi, so uh, this is me coming in with a little bit of an update. I finished rendering this whole video, was just about to post it, and then I found this. I don't know why I didn't do this last night. I found through Twitter this morning that there are some very crucial, important additives to this story that I wasn't aware of prior. In my video here, you will see me mention several times how it appears that Dan and Nikki would allow their child to antagonize, not interrogate, Bowser, which seems to be what led to the point of him snapping. Well, 
How ironic would it be if there have been videos online for years showing that Dan and Nikki also antagonized their dog Bowser? Interestingly enough, they mention how their dog Zoe was attacked by Bowser, but they don't mention how they would throw Zoe in his face like a chew toy. Oh my God. And they also, interestingly enough, left out the part that despite Bowser biting their child in the face for taking away his food, that there's also a video of Dan messing with Bowser's face when he was younger and messing with his food, and he said he would do this constantly to get him used to it. You know what I've always done with my dogs? Is I get really close to them and I get in their business while they eat because I don't want a mean dog. I don't want my little babies coming next to him while he eats and him bite their hands off. So I get him used to this. I don't know if it's the right thing to do, but I've always done it. And he's a good boy. Yeah, what it looks like is that you actually created a really stressful environment for your dog whenever it ate. How would you like it if somebody put their hand in your face every time you shoved a chicken nugget in your mouth? It probably wouldn't be very fun, would it? You created an environment that made your dog have anxiety every time it would eat because it was probably afraid that every time it would eat, it was going to have you smacking it in the face. Oh, I just want to make my dog nice. That's not how you make your dog nice. That's how you piss something off to the point where it snaps one day. I'm genuinely dumbfounded at the idea that these people could be so stupid where they are genuinely shocked that their dog turned out this way. How ironic is it that my dog just so happened to bite my kid for taking his food away after years of putting my hand in his face when he ate? How shocked am I that my dog ended up biting my other dog that I would throw into his face constantly, making it seem like that dog was a chew toy? How stupid are you? Are you are you seriously like, oh my god, I never saw this coming. We were just waiting for the day that he would snap. You don't deserve another animal again. And what happened? Well, <laughs> do you think they acted right away? If your answer to that is yes, I'm sorry to disappoint you. No, they didn't. They decided to go on a vacation. So after this happened, they took a vacation that they already had planned, but they took it anyway. So this week was very exciting for us because we actually made our way to to visit my family. It was an absolutely beautiful trip. And I'm excited today to share moments from this trip. Just, I don't know, whatever I deem shareable. So they weren't even around the dog. They weren't even in its presence. They were off enjoying life, having a great old time. When they came back, they decided they were gonna put the dog down, but not before they had a photo shoot with it to just show how sad they are. You know, just to show how emotional everything is. I have an older clip of me reading the Instagram post that I'm gonna put here because I tried to go and reread it for my second take and in between the time of me doing it the first time and now, she privated her account. McTownson, I'm so grateful for our time with you. You were a mini horse, a shark, a bear, a moose, a dinosaur, and Dan's best friend. Also, if you hear breathing, it's Chester. All in one. You destroyed our property and you also kept it safe. LOL, you kept me feeling safe. Bowser was the ultimate cuddle bug, but you wouldn't necessarily know that if you just dropped by our house. He just acted crazy. Well, Bowser had an aggressive side that reared its ugly head a few times over the years, and recently he bit Logan. After a lot of counsel, we decided it was time for Bowser to pass peacefully on. I know a lot of you will be shocked to hear this. My brain is still shocked. Mick Townsend has been a part of our life and content his entire life. And well, for the last nine years of our marriage, we didn't want to make this decision, as I'm sure you can imagine. I'm not kidding when I say this was one of the saddest days of my life. That being said, I'm so grateful we got to hold him and kiss him in our home while he passed. I will be uploading a video tonight with more of the story if you want to know. We will miss you forever, Bowser. The husband, Dan, after getting so much backlash, put dog murderer on his Instagram account as like a sarcastic, like, uh, like everyone's calling me this. He removed that too. But yeah, she had, you know, like the emotional photo shoot where she was in the sunshine, in a dress with her hair braided, hugging the dog, making it all dramatic because they were gonna and put him to sleep in 20 minutes. They could take the time to do all of this. They could take the time to get a photo shoot, have somebody come out and do this, but they couldn't take the time to get him proper training. They couldn't be do that, but they could take like a little photo shoot before, you know. Oh, oh my God, it's so cute, right? Trying to make yourselves seem like, oh, I'm so sad. My poor dog. He was great dog. He was an angel, but he was also really aggressive. Oh, he was so bad, but he was so good. Now I now I think the bull terrier is my favorite animal, period. Oh. 
this woman on camera says, you know, the timing was just really ironic because he has a lot of trouble when we're moving and we're planning to move soon. And he would have had a lot of other aggression problems had he moved with us. And the timing is just so interesting that it happened now. As you guys know, we're getting ready to move and um, <clears throat> we haven't said where, so I feel like, where are you moving? Because we haven't said it yet. But, you know, it, we weren't sure what was going to happen with Bowser because every time we move with Bowser, it is hard because he is basic, he's special needs, like he said. So there's a lot that goes into transporting Bowser and even picking a new home for Bowser. Like, there's a lot to consider in that. And so it was really, like, I, it was weird to have him attack Logan you know, right before we're going to different places to possibly look to move. Just say it. Like, the words are trying to escape through your teeth. It's convenient for you. That's what you want to say. It's convenient for you. It's convenient for you that your dog died because now you don't have to worry about how he's going to react aggressively when you move instead of having the problem fixed by taking it to a trainer or to somebody who could handle him. Oh, also, yeah, she, um, uh, Nikki, um, I keep wanting to call her Mika Stone. Her. And it's ironic because uh, she did a very similar thing or wanted to do a very similar thing. If you dive deeper into her channel, you can find out that she wanted to um, adopt the child from Thailand before she had her child. And they said, no, we don't want you vlogging your child's existence, its life for at least a year. And that was a deal breaker for them. So I asked her that and she was like, well, yes, but also Thailand has a, its own law that's unique to it that um, after you are, you pick up your child and they're your child, you are not allowed to talk about them or share any images, photos, videos, anything about them online for a year. Yeah, and that, So. I mean, Nikki's got a YouTube channel and we share a whole lot. Wait, it's... hold on, hold on, hold on. When that hit, we literally were like, yeah. What? If that doesn't help, um, she also has made it very public that she is not happy about wearing masks. It makes her feel sad. Let's just say that masks are totally effective and that they completely help spread or help slow the spread. Let's just say that. That aside, it still makes me sad. So just talking about my emotions, I guess, really quick, it makes me sad that my baby will go out and most of the time doesn't see full faces. Oh, and she's also an anti-vaxxer. So in my opinion, she shouldn't have dogs or children. You don't need to call me an anti-vaxxer. Cause once again, with that binary, like people love to put you in one or the other. So we don't need to call me an anti-vaxxer, but at the same time, if you wanted to call me an anti-vaxxer, you could go ahead and do that. I don't, I know a lot of people think that those people are crazy. Um, my personal belief is that if you think those people are crazy, you haven't gone down the wormhole enough. And I hate when people say this, but you haven't quote, done enough research. So like I said, let's not call me an anti-vaxxer because I'm actually not in the sense that like, I'm just pro safety. If you are of the narcissistic and selfish mindset where you've had an opportunity, multiple opportunities to rehome your pet and give it to somebody who can provide a better way of taking care of them, a safer environment for them where they're not going to bite anybody or be put in danger, okay? If you think they're better off dead than that, then you shouldn't have animals at all. That's a disgusting thing for any animal to go through. No animal deserves that. It's really sad in situations when animals need to be rehomed and yes, they can get depressed and it could be really upsetting for everyone involved, but at nine times out of 10, it would probably be better than being dead. If you can't handle an animal, don't get a f animal. And uh, as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, a little story time with Tamimi here, I have literally quit a job over people like this. So um, for a very brief point in my life, I worked at a veterinarian's office and uh, I did a lot of office work. I did the scheduling specifically. So you can schedule them for like a routine exam or surgery or emergency. Like there were just these like automatic things you could just fill in like really quick. Um, one automatic thing was uh, called discuss options. And I was taught that when you schedule a client under discuss options, it is when a dog bites somebody and they need to discuss their options. Every time that I have scheduled a discuss options, that dog would come into the building and wouldn't leave. The amount of times that that has happened 
in the very short time frame that I was there, which was less than two months, was overwhelming. Not just euthanasias, I'm talking about that specifically. A dog bit someone, they came in, the owners left without the dog. It happened very frequently. I don't know if it's just this area or if it was just that veterinarian's office specifically, it wasn't the best, but this happened a lot, especially in the span that I was there. I was not there that long and this happened a lot. You know, working in the office, you would overhear things, you would kind of find out, you know, like what happened. Nine times out of 10, it was a very similar situation where the dog bit one of their kids and they wanted to put it to sleep. Most situations are so preventable. If you have a dog with aggression issues and you have a kid, get the dog training or rehome it to somebody who can properly take care of it so a child doesn't get hurt because also your child doesn't need to be getting bitten by a dog because it's not their fault. A child can't understand why another animal is going to bite them. Okay, they're just kids. They're interested. They want to learn. They're curious. So preventable situations that didn't need to happen, but they did. And that's why this situation upsets me so much because I'm so tired of seeing this. And this happens a lot. This happens more than you would think. And it's very upsetting. It's very frustrating. Now, does that mean every time a dog bite happens, it's as simple as this and it's as easy as like, oh, well, this and this should have taken place. No, sometimes, like I said, freak accidents happen and sometimes dogs can be unpredictable. But in a lot of situations, it's preventable and it's not fair to the dog. And it's so irresponsible of the people who own it to just thank you so much for watching this situation is really getting under my skin and upsetting me so i'm gonna go uh if you made it to the end of this video i appreciate it thank you so much to everybody who has been supporting me on patreon especially lewis miss nisha anthony tressel and michelle you guys are amazing and thank you from the bottom of my heart in the next video i'll try not to be as angry as i was in this one hug your dogs and your cats and any other pet you have a little bit tighter tonight and just appreciate them because there's people out there that don't appreciate their animals. There really are.